been a long time since I've done a video on mock. Um, it's been a long time since I've done a real video. Uh, I want to do one on an automatic, or a sort of automatic tool changer. But main thing is I wanted a, a manual tool change that would also set tool height. Uh, and I didn't, I'm not really a programmer. I mean, I can kind of sort of do it, but I'm, I'm not like some of these other guys. Um, so I got a lot of help from YouTube, Daz the Gaz or whatever it is. He was awesome, um, very in depth. Uh, and then I pirated some stuff off of, I've got the auto tool setter, uh, from mock it's actually in the mock 4 hobby um, somewhere in the, in the modules or examples or something uh, so I, I use some of this stuff in here but these machines are all pretty custom so you really can't cut and paste everything because everybody does things a little differently so I wanted to step through this and show you how it works and why I did what I did and I'll post this up on the mock forums too so that you can actually get a, a copy of the, the actual programming um, so uh, this is my M6. Uh, you put that in there. I don't really even know why, but you do. Basically to get the instance number of the, this iteration of running this program. Uh, so I got current tool, selected tool, uh, and these are get the current tool number, uh, get the selected tool number. This is the position and, or I'm sorry, the, the modes that we're in so we can return it. And I don't know that I ever actually put it back in there now that I'm, now that I'm seeing this and explaining it. Uh, and also we got, these are our positions, the X, Y, and Z uh, when we start so that we can return the machine close to where it, you know, where, where it came from for the tool change. Uh, your G-code will probably take care of it, but that's in there just to, to be sure. All right, the first thing we do is and um, if selected tools equal to the current tool, then you return, and then it'll say this down there in the error thing. Um, nothing to do. Uh, this is an if, if else statement. So down here, this is the else. So if we are picking a new tool. This is gonna move our Z all the way up. We're using the, the control G code execute. Uh, some people use execute weight, but I didn't have very much luck with those. Kind of started making my machine run jerky and not run sometimes. G90 is absolute, G53, I'm using machine uh, coordinates on this. And you'll see I use machine coordinates on just about everything in this one. Uh, okay, so this moves the x-axis and the y-axis to the middle of the table so I can change the um, tool just out of the way. Uh, this is going to say change the tool and press start to continue. That, that'll sit there and wait till you hit the cycle start. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, this one will wait for the cycle start. So once you change it, hit the cycle start, it goes to the next one. Well, this is going to move this over to my tool setter. And again, I'm using all machine codes here. I'm sorry, machine coordinates. Uh, this starts our probing. I'm sorry, no, this goes down three and then waits to hook. I just have a little alligator clip. I've got a clip on the tool. Uh, and then it opens a dialog box or message box. Uh, and it gives you a choice. Click OK to begin the probing sequence, or you can cancel it. 16 is the um, cancel button. I guess that's what 16 means. I don't really know. Like I said, I don't really program. I ripped that off of somebody else's. Uh, so down here, here, if the my choice is equal to 16, then auto tool auto tool zero was canceled. So that gives you the option of changing the tool and then canceling it, and it goes back to where it was. So it retracts the Z to home and then it'll return to wherever we started before the tool change. And then return, it returns out of that that uh, loop and goes on about its business, shuts the M6 down. If not, you click OK. This moves the X and Y axis over to the tool setter and I've got it in there twice. Not real sure why I did that, but I did. I can delete that one. Uh, and then this starts the probing right here. So this goes down to minus nine machine coordinates, again, uh, at a feed rate of 15, and it's looking, it's the G31, so it's going to be looking for that probe signal. So once it gets the probe signal, it's going to stop, and then this uh, just shows the current tool, and then if you can see it says selected tool in here, that's because I haven't reassigned the current tool variable to the new number. So use the old one, 
and this shows the previous tool, and this is just a message that shows after that cycle start. Uh, and then down here to the set tool current to the selected tool. So now the current, the tool that's displayed in mock will now be the current number. So if it was one and we're switching to two, now the two will pop up in this current toolbox right there. Okay, so now we're down to actually getting the number and plugging it into the tool length um, section on your tool library or your tool table. Uh, so I brought up another variable, local, probe Z. We use the control get pound variable uh, instance 5073. So this retrieves the save variable from the G31 and that is in machine coordinates. Uh, I left this one in there. I put this one in there just so you can see. This will give you MC get axis position instance for axis 2. will get the axis position of the Z on my machine in a work coordinate system. At least I think. I left it in there just so if somebody needed to get it in machine coordinates or um, work coordinates for some reason, they could. All right, so now we've got our machine coordinates. So probe Z is now given a number. Now we brought up another variable, tool length. We're gonna use the math absolute value function. 9.523 is the gauge line on my machine uh, from the spindle, the, the mouth of the spindle opening down to my uh, touch plate. And we're gonna do an absolute value of that plus the probe Z. And since that is a negative number, this was a negative number as well, but by changing it to positive, we get a positive number and we don't have to change any operators in there. So it's 9.5, whatever, plus a negative seven, whatever you get. So that will give you the tool length. All right, and then this, I use this just to check my work. So this is control set last error. This will display the tool length and then it'll actually show the number in the error window on mock. Now we come down to the tool set data, instance MC, M tool mill height, selected tool and tool length. So this is gonna take, this is gonna set my tool height of this number, which is the selected tool still, because I haven't changed it to the current tool. So still whatever we're picking. So the new tool number or slot will be given this number. And so if I pull up my tool table down here, tool table. So if we're switching to tool two, it'll be this box. So it's gonna fill that number in with the number we just calculated from tool length. So I hope that makes sense. That, that was the, that's kind of the, the crux of the whole thing is getting that into a table that you can use. All right, so we're down here till we've got it set. Now we need to, I put a two second pause in there, to disconnect your alligator clip. I'm probably gonna put in another dialog box so that it doesn't go tearing off with the thing still connected. Uh, and then we go back to retracting the Z. G90, G53, G0, X. And then this is gonna set to the two number value X is from up here and that was our position when we started. So now this thing's gonna go X and Y back to where it started. Notice we used G90, G53 machine codes, G0 rapid, X, and then we stop it there. We put the um, quotation mark there, the dot dot to delineate that we're having something different. And then two number value X, dot dot. And then we put Y in quotes, dot dot, two number value Y. So that moves back to the initial X and Y positions. All right, and then I have it say tool change complete. H is set to the selected tool, and it's set to this tool length. All right, I hope that helps you. I'll splice in videos um, later.